Hey everyone, I'm so excited to share with you today's abiding reflection. We'll be in the book of Galatians. It's where I've been personally and the Lord has been really encouraging me through this book. As you know, the history of the book of Galatians is Paul writing to a group of Gentile believers that had given their lives to the Lord and he's writing to them because somewhere along the way they were introduced to false teachers that were telling them that they had to come under bondage and come under Jewish law and tradition, which we know that the Lord had freed them from and the work of salvation was complete. And these false teachers were telling them that they had to add something to gain right standing or favor with God or that they could do something to add to their righteousness. But we know that Jesus' work on the cross was complete and final and because of Jesus, we stand in his righteousness before God. And it's not our own. And I think of Paul's heart writing this, the fact that if anyone could have added to their salvation, it would have been Paul because he was a Pharisee. He was a Jew of Jews. He kept the law to a T. And he even went to the extent of persecuting Christians out of zeal for the Jewish law. And if Paul is writing to them, saying, listen, the freedom that Christ died to give you and the salvation that he died to give you, you cannot do anything to add to that. And especially from Paul, it must have been such a comfort to them and such a reminder that Jesus has set us free and he has saved us. And whatever these false teachers are saying, we've strayed from the truth of the gospel. And that's exactly what Paul is reminding them. In chapter 3, verse 3, Paul says, Having begun in the Spirit, are you now seeking to be made perfect by the flesh? Because we know the truth of the gospel is that Jesus' Spirit comes to live inside of us, but we have the choice to walk in the Spirit or walk in the flesh. And these false teachers were telling them that they had to do things in their flesh to earn salvation and to earn greater acceptance by God. And then this is where I've been really just meditating on is chapter 5 verse 7 says Paul speaking to them you were running well who hindered you from obeying the truth this persuasion does not come from him who calls you and I love the fact that Paul uses the word running because that term is used quite a few times in the New Testament to correlate to our walk with the Lord and Paul tells them you were running well, you started really well, but something has happened along the way. And as I was reading that, I was just um, praying and searching my heart and asking the Lord um, to reveal to me um, areas in my life where maybe I started well and I was running, but have allowed myself to either slow down to a jog or maybe I have began walking or maybe I'm just sitting in complacency. And um, I'm so grateful for God's grace and his forgiveness because, um, and repentance, like we talked about a couple weeks ago during the reflection, that, re that repentance is opportunity for hope. You know, it's a lot of times people don't like to talk about it, but it's a word for the believer that brings great rejoicing because we know that if there are those areas where we have slowed down, where we have lost our urgency, that the Lord is always there and he always is there to forgive and to um, to give us that fire back and that urgency back. So then Paul says, who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion is not from him who calls you. And we're all persuaded by something. And it just made me think, what is persuading me? What do I get up in the morning thinking of? What compels me? What um, is my goal and my aim throughout every day when I'm doing even just little tasks? Um, the Bible says that whether you eat or whatever you do, do unto the glory of God. So he is our aim. And we have to ask ourselves, who is persuading us? Who am I listening to? What standard am I measuring myself up against? Have I started to listen to who the world says that I should be and how I should act? Or am I measuring myself to God's word? And we can all pursue things like 
um, success or financial gain or a career and not that those things in and of themselves are bad but when they become our sole focus and our aim they become an idol and they become something that is unhealthy and that distracts us from our walk with the Lord and I think of Paul in Philippians 3 when he says I count everything as loss for the sake of Christ Indeed, I count everything as lost because of the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord. Not that I've already attained or am already perfected, but I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And just the fact that the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus and running to him with all of our lives, with all that we have, all the things here on this earth that we have to gain pale in comparison to gaining Jesus. So I also think of Hebrews 12.1 when I think of running and when I ask myself, Lord, was there a point where I was running well and I was um, on fire for you and I had an urgency, but have I slowed down? Hebrews 12.1 says, run with endurance the race set before you. The race of following Jesus and the race of faith is one of endurance, and that's a word that a lot of times we shirk from or we kind of um, avoid or it's hard because sometimes the intensity of a trial isn't what's so hard as we've heard it said, but it's the endurance of a trial that tests us. And um, we can remember that the Lord is the one who gives us strength and endurance for each and every moment. And um, Paul is encouraging these Gentile believers in Galatia to remember the voice of the one who has called them. And um, I encourage you today, just remember that moment when you first heard the Lord call you, when you first gave your life to the Lord, and just how sweet it was when he rescued you, when he saved you, and how precious his grace was, that freedom of feeling that I don't have to earn my salvation. He has already done everything that is necessary for me to be saved. And just as I think about it, I remember thinking there's nothing that I would do in the world. Um, I don't want to trade this moment for anything, just of hearing my Savior call my name. And may we chase the voice of our Savior. May his voice, his persuasion be the one that we wake up for, that we long for throughout the day. And may Jesus' opinion be the only one that we're concerned about. May our lives be spent pursuing him, running this way, race with endurance. Endurance is something that we cannot produce in ourselves, but it is a work of the Spirit. One of two of the fruits of the Spirit include patience and long-suffering. And especially as we're walking through um, the situation with the coronavirus, sometimes it is just amazing to me how long it's been going on and we don't know how long it will go on but I know that the Lord can give us patience and long suffering through it. So in this time of quiet and isolation I've been asking myself a lot and bringing it before the Lord just asking who or what am I pursuing? What is my aim? If I am pursuing Christ am I running or am I walking or am I just sitting in complacency? As we seek to pursue Christ and run this race of endurance well, I think of Isaiah 40, chapter 40, verse 31, that says, They who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So if you're feeling faint today, if you're feeling weary, I pray that the Lord would fill you with his spirit, that you would look to him, that you would remember that he is the one that is calling you. And if something has gotten you distracted or discouraged, that you would fix your gaze on him and remember that he loves you, that the work of salvation is complete in him. It's easy to grow discouraged and grow weak in our faith, but the Lord has ordained seasons of waiting so that he can produce endurance and strength in us. Don't stop running after the Lord and his call. And whether in this season he's calling you to go or to wait, don't stop pursuing him. So I just pray that as we seek him, um, that we would just continue to run after him with all of our hearts. And that when we gather back together, that it'll just be a great time of rejoicing in the work that the Lord has done 
during this time. Love you all and miss you, and I pray this encouraged you.